Ciao a tutti, come state? Oggi faccio il video della settimana 3, 1, 2, 3, sì. Um, what did we look at this week? Che cosa abbiamo studiato? Che cosa abbiamo studiato? That was a past tense question. So, um, what did we study? Or what have we studied, if you like? Che cosa abbiamo studiato? Now, you might understand that question, but just for the sake of it, I'm going to write it down so you can see how it's, uh, how it's spelled and pronounced. So, uh, che cosa? Lots of what, what questions start with this. Che cosa? Abbiamo, so that's we have in the present tense, um, and then studiato, so that's the past participle of the verb studiare, nice regular past participle there, it's an A-R-E verb, studiare, so some verbs might have are at the end, but they're actually, they've got an I, oh that way, they've got an I, a -R -E. Like the verb mangiare. Che cosa abbiamo mangiato? So um, don't be surprised if the stem of the verb also includes an I. Okay, so you'll just keep the I in there and add ato as usual. Che cosa abbiamo studiato? Well, at the beginning of the lesson we started off looking at some um, time-related expressions, so tem temporal phrases if you like. Um, so. Ecco, sono qui. So we've got a list here with three columns. Right, they're not in like a specific order. <laughs> I got you at the beginning of the lesson to try and put um, some of these phrases, these time expressions, into chronological order. That was just really to see whether you understood what they meant and to get you working together. So um, let me show you some of them. Due ore fa. Due ore fa. So that means two hours ago. Due ore fa. Una settimana fa. We've got a little squiggle on there. Una settimana fa. So we had due ore fa. And then we got una settimana fa. One week ago. Let's find another one with fa at the end. Here's one. Due giorni fa. Due giorni fa. So two days ago. Okay, so we've got due ore, due giorni, e una settimana fa. If this was two weeks ago, we would change una to due, and we would change settimana to settimane because una settimana is a feminine noun, so one una instead of uno, because it's feminine, and then settimana, well, it's got an A at the end, so it's a feminine noun, so due settimane. Okay, so if you're saying like five weeks ago, you need to remember that settimana, week, becomes weeks. Okay, so whereas in English we just chuck a pop an S at the end, settimana, changes to settimane. So with these three weeks ago, two days ago, five minutes ago, all of these phrases have fa at the end of them. Fa. That uh, corresponds to the English ago. Okay, so cinque minuti fa. Due giorni fa. Um, un anno fa etc. So it's really useful and you're going to need those kind of phrases for using uh, or when you use il passato prossimo, the past tense. Okay, let's have a look at a few more of these and then we'll get on to the main point of this lesson. Ieri, oh sorry, ieri sera, so not just yesterday but yesterday evening. Ieri, that means yesterday. Okay, right, so let me just have a look at these. Okay, one, two, three. Mm, see, okay. So here we've got a slightly different uh, phrase. Il mese scorso. Scorso significa in inglese last. As in last week, last month, last year, last Tuesday, whatever. So this one is il mese scorso, last month. Il, we've got the article, il 
mezza scorso. So from that scorso, you can see that it's that adjective, last, agrees with the gender of the noun, il mese scorso. Okay. However, if you've got something like la settimana, like you're saying last week, la settimana scorsa. So il mese scorso, la settimana scorsa. So um, the main one that you're going to need to remember is la settimana scorsa because it's the feminine sort of time phrase. Um, okay, here we've got a day of the week, sabato scorso. So days of the week, all of them apart from Sunday are masculine. In fact, that's written on page pagina una. Sono maschili. Apart from domenica, which is feminine. So if you were saying last Sunday, domenica scorsa. Um, similar thing goes for the months, masculine, so if you're saying last May, last May, maggio scorso, dicembre scorso, etc. So there's some useful phrases you just need to get used to saying. So um, I'm going to send you um, basically all of these that you can cut out if you like and you can sort of test yourselves. Or you can test with your partner or at home, um, you know, with someone else if you like. Okay, now, the main thing that we did, and I think this, this worked quite well, you, all, <laughs> you actually kept working past the end of the lesson on this game. So, um, what I did, and I'll, I need to use the board for this, is I introduced this vocabulary. So we've got two pages of this vocabulary. We're going to go through it now. This will be useful for those who actually weren't in the lesson. Um, so, for this, <laughs> I'm going to be over here, <laughs> okay? So, um, I'm just going to model how you say this. So, ho cucinato. Ho cucinato. This is, these are all phrases in the I form of the passato prossimo. I have cooked, or I cooked. Ho mangiato. Ho mangiato. I ate, or I have eaten. I don't think there's a way that I can get in this. Let's see if I can bring this closer to me. Let's see if this works. Ecco qua. Okay, so you might see a little bit of me. So, um, ecco, see? Yeah, okay, we'll do it like this. Ho cucinato, ho mangiato, prima ho cucinato e poi ho mangiato. First I cooked, then I ate. Ho fatto la spesa. Fatto la spesa. So here we've got a verb phrase. This comes from the phrase fare la spesa, which means to do the shopping, as in like the food shopping, get your provisions. So this fatto is an irregular uh, past participle. Um, so it is an ARE verb. It's very irregular when you conjugate it in the present tense, faccio, fai, fa, etc. Um, even though it's got uh, this ato sound, it's got a double T. So, fatto. Ho fatto la spesa. I did the food shop. Oops, excuse me. Uh, here we have an IRE verb. Pulire, which means to clean. There you go, to clean. So, ho pulito la casa. Significa, I cleaned the house. Ho fatto, again we got fa fatto, i compiti. Okay. That means I did or I have done the homework. Useful verb, um, useful noun. Ho lavorato nel giardino. Ho lavorato nel giardino. I worked in the garden. Okay. Nel giardino, in the garden. So we're going to see more and more of these little um, articulated prepositions. This is where you have the, the preposition in plus the, um, the article V, which um, incidentally in Italian is in, oops, excuse me, <laughs> plus il. So um, in plus il becomes nel. And this is something that you'll see, you'll also see nella. So um, I worked in the kitchen. Ho lavorato nella cucina. Nella cucina. So don't be surprised when you see things like nel, del, 
sol, etc. That's just um, a preposition plus the article put together. So we've had lavorato nel giardino. Here we just have ho lavorato. I worked. Generic work could be in the garden, could be in your office, could be fixing something. Ho lavorato. Okay, we've got H here, H. Um, ho fatto il bucato. So I was thinking about this. So normally uh, bucato means like perforated or something with holes in it. So I'm not quite sure where this comes from, but il bucato is the laundry, like the washing. So I did the washing or the laundry. Okay, so I'm going to show you this sheet. This is one of the sheets. Let me just bring this towards me. Echo me, here I am. So um, let's have a look. I'm going to point at these and we're going to. Oh, I've just realised not all of these are on this sheet. Mi dispiace. We'll have to look at the next page and then we'll come back to the pictures. So that was half of the things that you can say you've done in the past. Especially if someone asks you something like, Che cosa? Che cosa hai fatto? Um, il fine settimana. What did you do at the weekend? Che cosa hai fatto ieri? What did you do yesterday? So let's have a look at the rest of the vocab that we can actually look at the photos. Ho guardato la televisione. That one's quite obvious, isn't it? I watched from the verb guardare, which means to watch or to look at. La televisione. Let's go forward a little bit there. Ho ascoltato la musica. Questo è una cosa che ho fatto stamattina. Sì, stamattina ho ascoltato la musica. I was listening to music. Having a good old time, actually. Um, okay, che ho letto. Letto. So this is an irregular past participle, and it's from the verb leggere. Sorry if you can hear a lot of noise, because <laughs> I've got my mic on my table. That's the verb leggere. And letto means I read. Now, ho dormito is from the IRE verb dormire, which means to sleep. Io mi piace dormire, sì, I like sleeping. Um, ho letto, ho dormito. Now, one thing that can be confusing is the word letto. So here it's a past participle, which means read. Um, as in, I have read something, I read something. Ho letto un libro. Ho letto il giornale. I read the paper. Letto as a noun. Un letto or il letto means a bed. So don't be surprised if you see that word somewhere and you think, ah, it means something to do with a bed. Okay? But if it's got any of the conjugations of avere in front of it, like ho letto or abbiamo letto, it means we have read or I have read or she read, he read, they read, etc. So a um, little bit confusing, therefore, that I've put dormire very close to the, um, uh, the verb leggere in the past participle. I read, I slept. One of my favourite things here, ho visto gli amici. Ho visto gli amici. I saw friends. So, gli amici is um, the way that you would say friends in the plural. This is the masculine plural. So, if you saw a bunch of um, male friends, ho visto gli amici, va bene, that's fine. If you saw a bunch of ladies, like for example, tomorrow I'm seeing a couple of my good girlfriends, so I wouldn't say, technically, I wouldn't say ho visto gli amici, I would say, Ho visto le amiche. Amiche. Le, because I'm talking about a group of female ladies. And amica, in the plural, the female friend, amica, becomes amiche. C-H-E, because if it was just a C and an E together, it would be amice. But I need to keep that K sound, that hard C. So, le amiche bunch of girlfriends. However, if it's a mixed bunch of friends you're seeing, you can use gli amici. So that works a little bit like the, um, the French, where, um, not in this example, but where things default to the masculine when you're talking about they or them. Okay, well done.
So let's have a look at these last two. Uh, okay. Okay, let's try and get a little closer for that because the board's at an angle. Ho portato a spasso il cane. Ho portato a spasso il cane. What's il cane? That's the dog, isn't it? So what does this mean? I took the dog for a walk. Yeah, I took the dog out. Ho portato a spasso il cane. Ho fatto i miei esercizi. Esercizi. See, exercises. Okay, so I did i miei. I miei is the plural form of um, my. So, and it comes in front of esercizi, which is a plural masculine noun. So, i miei comes in front of, is what you see in front of my something plural masculine. So, for example, um, i miei genitori, my parents genitori, i miei genitori. So that's sort of the plural equivalent in the masculine of il mio. So that's a useful one, we'll see more of those as well, those possessive pronouns. Now, we've had a look at all of those. Now I'm going to show you le immagini. So, uh, the images. Sorry, le immagini. So, um, qui abbiamo, what is this? So this is going shopping, isn't it? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through these and tell you the same um, past tense of uh, what the, the, the phrase that describes them. So, for example, um, ho fatto la stesa. I'm going to hold this up here and uh, just point. So, ascoltate. Ho mangiato. Ho cucinato. That's a little bird singing outside. That's sweet. Carino. Um, ho lavorato nel giardino. This one, I like this picture. Ho pulito la casa. And this one. Ho fatto il bucato. Now, if you remember these, because you played this game, sort of holding up the cards and telling each other what the sentence was, if you remember them, say them along with me, okay? So we've got to. Ho fatto il bucato. Ho letto. Ho visto gli amici, o le amiche, it's just two ladies. Um, ho portato a spasso il cane. Ho guardato la televisione. Ecco. What's that one there? So he's not reading, he's, he's doing his homework. Ho fatto i compiti. This one here, one of my favourite things to do. Ascoltare la musica, so in the past tense. Ho ascoltato la musica, and then what have we got? We've got ho dormito. Yeah, I slept. This crazy one here is someone doing a lot of work. <laughs> so ho lavorato, and check this one out. I would love to have this outfit. Ho fatto i miei esercizi. Sì, <laughs> lovely. Do you know I actually have some leg warmers like that? I think they're cool. Okay, molto bene. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold up some of these little cards. Okay, so in class I gave you a big pile of cards where you had two or three or maybe even four of the same ones. Okay, so you could play either like a snap game or you could just like hold them up and test each other what they were. Some people were playing like a memory game where you lay them all down and you have to pick them up and remember which ones were, etc. So you can have a lot of fun with card games. Let's start with this half. In here, you'll only, you should only have one of each. Che cosa hai fatto ieri? So what did you do yesterday? Let me hold this up and you tell me. Ho fatto il bucato. Sì. Che cosa hai fatto ieri? Ho lavorato. Sì. Che cosa hai fatto? Ho mangiato. Yeah, what did you do? I ate. Ho fatto i compiti. Ho fatto la spesa. Did the shopping? Yeah. Ho cucinato. Sì. Ho lavorato nel giardino. Perfetto. Oh, we got another ho mangiato. There. Let's see this one. 
ho guardato la televisione Ups. ho ascoltato la musica <laughs> ho letto sì I'm assuming you're getting all of these right ho dormito sì ho visto gli amici o ho visto le amiche if it's a bunch of ladies this one's hard ho portato a spasso il cane I took the dog out for a walk and then last one ho fatto i miei esercizi well done guys that was you know that's quite tough so um, what I'm going to do now is I'm, I'm going to send you the digital copy of this handout from week three and if there's any exercises that you didn't complete in class please do them um, or at least have a look through them but it would help if you complete anything and that way if you've got any queries that arise as you complete them you can ask me in class or you can um, ask me before class you know um, now now um, if you have a little look at exercise 8a and 8b this is just something to look at before next week you'll get a little clue as to what we're going to move on to next so instead of using past tense the passato prossimo with the verb avere like I have eaten I have slept I saw I have listened to music etc we're going to start looking at verbs that use essere in the past tense so there's some examples here um, using the verb andare so if I were to say I went to the restaurant, I would say sono andata al ristorante, because I'm a lady. So sono is like the I have bit, and andata is the gone, I have gone to, or I went. Andato would be what a chap says, sono andato al ristorante, sono andata, if you're a lady. So. Um, that starts to get a little bit more complicated, so um, that's what we're going to be looking at next week. Also, if you get a chance, page one. Do you remember that um, um, I mentioned to you, you can type some things in on google.it. And um, one thing that you could write, um, if you get a chance to do this, do it, because it, it could be quite interesting. So go on to google.it, www.google.it, okay, I'll write that down for you now, although all of this is on page um, one of your handout. So go to this website, go to the search bar and type in, in Italian obviously, <laughs> um, l'ultima volta che, l'ultima volta che, the last time that. Okay, you don't have to do the, the ellipsis, the dot dot dot, but put in l'ultima volta che. And um, if you like, you can then put in L'ultima volta che ho, the last time that I have. So what you're probably going to get then is lots of past tense phrases. So if you wanted to, you could put l'ultima volta che ho and then put an A. And then suggestions are going to come up um, with verbs that start with an A. Probably something like the last time that I had, right? Che ho avuto. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So you could get some interesting responses. So if you like just to change it up, do a bit of research, you could put l'ultima volta che ho and then put like a D or a different letter and then other suggestions will come up. So out of those suggestions find a past tense example that you like for whatever reason and as long as it isn't too naughty <laughs> we're going to have a look at the next week and see what you found. So um, I'll be in touch soon sending this over this video link with your handout and um, in the meantime I hope you have a nice end of the week and a good weekend. Grazie mille e alla settimana prossima. Ciao!